I'm Monster Mike, and this is Bronco Garage. Welcome back to the Bronco Garage. I'm Monster Mike, and today we are gonna be doing an install of this brand new aftermarket gas tank. That's right, it's out with the old and in with the new with the Lick Creek Restorations stainless steel 20 gallon gas tank. And instead of me rambling on about all these great features, how about you go check out the unbox video that I did with Tom Hyde over there at Lick Creek Restorations, where him and I get to share with you all the great features and all the cool tech about this tank. Check it out in the unbox video card above. Now, let's go ahead and get into the install. Before starting, read the install instructions and watch this video in its entirety and make sure you are 100% prepared. When you are ready to disable your Bronco, please make sure you set the e-brake, disconnect the ground cables from the battery, have a good working fire extinguisher close by, and wheel chalk the tires if you're not using a lift. I recommend as soon as the parts arrive, look for the hardware bag and check off the contents on the install instructions to verify all parts are accounted for and there's no damaged or missing parts. This includes checking threads for damage as well. Also, make sure you have all the tools required. Always verify the inside of the tank is clean and no trash or debris is inside it. Using warm water and dish soap to clean it out is recommended then make sure it is 100% dry before installing. This tank is getting prepped for a carburetor setup. For EFI setup, be sure to reference the install instructions provided with the tank. Now first, locate the one inch long 832 stainless steel pan head screws and thread them in from the bottom of the plate. These will be your electrical connector studs. Make sure to use a dab of sealant when installing to prevent fuel leaking out one of the screw threads directly into the plate with no washer, but the second one threads through the black Delrin isolator that is pre-installed with a supplied washer. Do not over torque these screws. 30 to 40 inch pounds is more than enough. The nuts and the additional washers are provided to secure the terminals on the top side of the plate to these screws. Coming soon, a supplement video for EFI install. Look for the video card to appear in this video as well as a link in the description. Align the large cork gasket and pump plate with the holes in the top of the tank and add a dab of sealant to each 1032 brass pan head screw and tighten the screws down moving in a star-like pattern and evenly tightening them till the screws are 30 to 40 inch pounds tight. As a reminder, we're gonna do a supplement video for EFI, which is coming soon. Next, install the sending unit in a similar fashion using the same screws and sealant. The sending unit needs to go in a certain way for the screws to line up properly. Look for the notch molded into the top of the sending unit and make sure it is facing the rear of the tank. This typically makes the wiring face the front of the tank. Now that the pump plate and sending unit are installed, we can set up the top of this pump plate for a carburetor. The front supply port that has an S engraved into the pump plate next to it will be capped off for carb setups. Then the 90 degree fitting will be added to the return port. This is because the return tube goes to the bottom of the tank and the supply does not, so it can accommodate an EFI pump and sock filter. We recommend you use aluminum wrenches to tighten AN fittings like these. Now, let's cut, splice, and connect the terminals to the wires and attach them to the tank. We supply the terminals, but you will need to use your own tools and add anything if you have a preference for doing wiring and electrical. As you can see, 
We also provide a pigtail with a weather pack connector, so you are good for an EFI upgrade later. For now, we're going to have our wiring set up for EFI, but just using the wiring to get the sending unit to send a signal to the gauge cluster on the dash. Next, use fuel rated 3 8 rubber hose and attach it to the supplied 90 degree barb fitting and clamp it tight using the clamp provided. Nest the fuel hose and wiring onto the pump plate so nothing snags while installing the tank. One more AN plug to install at the drain, then thread check all the bolt holes you plan on using when mounting the tank to the frame. If you find any threads that are hard to start, you'll want to check the threads for trash or weld splatter. Do not force the bolt into the nut. Instead, use your flashlight and inspect the threads for damage or trash. Contact Duff's tech department if you need further help. So whether you want to drive till the old tank is empty or pump the gas out or use gravity, we recommend you empty your old gas tank before removing it. I mean, come on guys, it's time to get that old tank out of there. Aren't you just done with all those headaches? If you have a 77 frame, you will need to use the supplied templates and instructions provided with the tank. Now the templates are actually in the instruction sheet. So you have to cut those out in order to use them. For 66 to 76 frames, you'll need to drill two holes in your frame to install this tank, one hole on each frame rail. Using the slot in the frame as a guide for the hole you need to drill, make sure the holes you drill are centered in the frame and use a punch and small drill and step up gradually till you get to the supplied half inch drill bit or use a carbide hole saw with a pilot and drill one hole. If you don't mark or drill the hole correctly, you may need to open the hole up to 5 8 or even use a carbide bit and open the hole back to center with the bracket. So be very careful while you're drilling to make sure that the drill bit doesn't walk. Next is the installation of the frame brackets. Use a file or deburring tool to get all the sharp burrs knocked off the hole before installing frame nut plates. If you're using the James Duff stock bumper tire carrier like shown on this Bronco, then you'll either need to remove the bumper or you will need to modify one of the frame nut plates by cutting the end of it off and putting a slight bend in the part. We chose to modify the nut plate versus taking the bumper off. Now it's time to double check your work and test fit the tank mounting plates to the frame nut plates and thread the bolts into the nuts welded to the nut plate. You definitely will want to catch any fitment or threading issues now before you install the tank. Time to install the tank. Now make sure you apply anti-seize to the bolts before installing them and please, for the love of God, do not use an impact gun. Raise the tank up as high as possible without making contact with the tub. The tank accommodates Broncos with zero, one, and two inches of body lift. Now, if your Bronco comes equipped with an aftermarket bumper or receiver, be sure there's clearance between those and the tank before you bolt the tank in place. Reinstall the filler and breather hose and clamp them into position. Make sure the hoses do not have any dirt or sediment in them and that the connection is clean at both ends so you do not create any leak points. It is time to cut and splice the wiring on your Bronco to the tank wiring. 
For this install, we have a ground and ascending unit wire. The wire harness is also plumbed for an EFI pump for that eventual upgrade. Be sure to tuck the wiring and plumbing up high and out of the way of any heat source or moving parts. If your plumbing or external pump for gas is within six inches of your muffler, you may want to wrap or heat shield your pump and hose to prevent any fuel boiling or vapor lock issues. You can also wrap the muffler with heat shield. James Duff provides both the male and female weather pack connector, but you will need to source the correct crimping tool. Last, you will need to connect the 3 8 fuel hose to your current hard or soft line plumbed on your Bronco. We are using a Union since our fuel line came up short, but we're gonna replace all that when we upgrade to EFI. It may be tough to choose between running a skid plate and showing off this beautiful tank. I completely understand that dilemma. This Bronco is going off-road, so it's getting a skid plate. Now this is a very straightforward install, but make sure you use anti-seize on the bolt threads and you may need a pry bar to get that last hole to line up. And please do not use an impact gun. It is time to wrap this up. Double check your work and make sure there's no critical hardware or parts that are not attached where they're supposed to be and that all your nuts and bolts are tight. If you had to remove anything to do this install, make sure all those parts are back on the Bronco. Grab a pair of leather or mechanic gloves, put a pair of safety glasses on and add a couple gallons of fuel to the new gas tank and go and check for leaks. Once no leaks are found, reconnect the battery, put the Bronco in park or neutral, have the fire extinguisher ready and get the engine running. Look for more leaks at the engine bay while it's running and underneath the Bronco. Immediately turn off the vehicle if you see or smell gas or hear anything unusual. If all checks out good and safe, get the Bronco on the road and go fuel up the new gas tank. Remember to fill only to the first click of the pump. Do not overfill this gas tank. Check for leaks again around the tank, the filler and breather hoses, and make sure your gas gauge on the dash is working properly. All right, so the install was actually very straightforward. And, uh, you know, according to Tom over Lick Creek Restorations, this should be about a four out of 10 on the degree of difficulty. I'd have to agree with him, uh, especially if you're just doing carbureted. Um, now, moving forward from here, I'm excited to try this tank out and really put it through the test on and off road. And I'm looking forward to your feedback as well down in the comments. In fact, we're gonna be doing an install with EFI soon. So we'll be able to show you guys more on that as well in some of our next episodes. Make sure to subscribe and we'll see you guys next time. Hey, thanks for joining us. Make sure to like and subscribe and check us out on social media as well. Look forward to seeing you guys in the next one.